the other night we were just scrolling through, you know, to buy to be dot TV, you know, looking for some ignorant shit on there or something, you know, dude, that's like such like a, like a comfort streaming place. Like yeah. no, nothing's catered towards you. Nothing's like, you're not like bombarded with ads or like fucking the streaming services, like TV show that came out oh, or yeah. whatever, like the, the show of the week or whatever. You yeah. Know? Yeah. It's like, not like none the, of that bullshit, dude. Like yeah. two is like straight to the point fucking for the people. Yeah. Like, yeah, yeah. Oh my God. It's I not like it. top 10 movies in America right now from the twisted torture geniuses of stranger things. Yeah. Dude. Yeah. Fuck all that, dude. This is like, yeah. From the twisted mind of Paul Thomas Anderson. <laughs> Yeah, you know, fucking, like, Tubi rocks, bro, but, you know, I, I just, I love it. Like, we watched Shivers on Tubi, and we were scrolling through, and we just decided, uh, we, we found ourselves uh, looking at They Live from 1988, mm-hmm. and uh, we watched it, and uh, I had seen They Live before, and uh, I fucking love this movie. It's, when did you watch it? I watched it in college with this girl that I was seeing. Yeah. Uh, Maria Alvarez. Shout out to Maria. Yeah, shout out to Maria. Yeah, I watched it like in college with her. And I was just kind of like, this is my favorite John Carpenter movie, dude. I can't believe I'm saying it. Like, it's my favorite John Carpenter movie. Um, You know, people like really like, you know, dick ride like The Thing or like Hollow's Eve Mm -hmm. with, you know, Michael the Michael Myers ones. But I really like they live a lot and like it's it's kind of an atypical of me to say that because it comes out in like the late 80s you know like yeah 1988. it's not like everyone knows that 80s was kind of just like a very cheesy cliche yeah. era of film this and it has is, that it oh, definitely yeah, yeah, has yeah, that yeah, like yeah, 80s yeah. 80s gloss to it oh, you know yeah. yeah the 80s cringe camp trash yeah. sort of yeah. cheapness to it you watch this and you watch Robocop and you're like, okay, I can tell that it's like, oh, yeah. this is like, this got that 80s cover over it. You mm. know what I mean? But it's fun. It's fun. It's definitely like, it's a, it's a certain vibe. It was really good. I, I liked it. I liked the, the commentary it had. I'm not like that familiar with John Carpenter, mm. other than the fact that I see his name in front of films. You know? Yeah. Like, how does he get to that level where like, John Carpenter is the thing. John Carpenter is Halloween. Like how do you... It's all it's always been like that's like, everyone's like Wes Craven's The New Nightmare, George A. Romero's Dawn of the Dead. Like it's it's always people put that, you know, Eli Roth's Hostel 2. Yeah. What it's about Sam Raimi Evil like, Dead? Did they did they do that? No, I, I don't think he did that. No, they no, should have. It's just a marketing it's yeah. just a marketing thing cuz people want to see stuff by their own like director, you know. Like mm-hmm. people they they live what surprises me about it the most was is it's like this sort of campy sci-fi movie like really bad acting all the stuff but then it has like this really cool like message that stuck with me a lot especially when i was like watching when i was like 20 in, in college and stuff like this whole idea of like it's very much an allegory to like plato's like the cave you know, stuck in this sort of like blindfolded like world of like mm-hmm. consumerism and this it's aliens have taken over the world. Yeah. And They've then, inf- infiltrated us and we yeah. have no idea. Yeah, yeah. They infiltrated us and they're using us like they're using our energy for their own good, I guess. Something like yeah. like that. They have us as like hypnotized, essentially. Like slaves to the corporation, to the system, you know, and like Yeah, do you wanna like set up the story yeah so we follow, i want to know what you thought of it watching it for the first time yeah yeah so we follow roddy piper i think who's like a wrestler in the 80s and like this is when eight this is when wrestling was huge yeah right like this is like huge era for wrestling and god like wwe wwf like united world wrestling or whatever like is fucking crazy dude and so you have this wrestler as the main character and he's just like kind of wandering a wandering vagrant through 
Where is it? Houston or something like that? Or Dallas? Yeah, I think it's like Houston or Dallas. I don't, I'm not actually sure. But I'm sure it was filmed in like LA. Yeah. He basically is... He's like in this homeless encampment. Uh -huh. He goes to like this homeless... He's like a wanderer, drifter type guy. You know, he's he's kind of a based motherfucker out here. Like, yeah. He's like not on the grid. He's kind of just like a wanderer. And he stumbles upon this encampment. And the encampment is kind of like an underground sort of like... Mm -hmm. organization that's taps into more of like really what's going on like yeah they're like pretty woke and they have this guy who talks on television yeah they like they hack into people's tvs and they're like you are being hypnotized by aliens yeah yeah, yeah 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 they're the only people who are getting the stream of what's really going on and they yeah. have these glasses right and in, in the glasses yeah, well, let's, let's so they're tapping into this guy, the Roddy Piper character is tapping more into what's going on because they get this uh, television from this kind of prophet dude, this older prophet dude. And what happens is they get raided by the cops. They get raided by the cops because obviously something weird is going on. They, they want to stop the revolution, right? And that seems, that seems sick, dude. Yeah. Oh my God. Like the raid is like the Mount of people and extras they had and like props and like shot it all at night and just like the way the raid like kind of moves through the encampment down in the alleyway and then into like a house you know or it's like dude that was such a sick scene i love that oh no i love that scene too yeah it was it was cool like with the homeless encampment and they're like bulldozing over and they got to get out but basically roddy piper escapes and he finds himself with this box of sunglasses that was the la That was the only thing that the cops didn't raid from the church, like where they were mm -hmm. filming the shit. You mm -hmm. know, mm -hmm. what with the glasses comes like the most iconic like scene from the movie. This is kind of like why it's a sort of a cult classic, and the the imagery used in this has been used in art. You know, with like Shepard Fairey uses it for Obey. Yeah, like you know, Obama's like same... campaign stuff. It's like. Yeah, yeah, Obama's can't, like, he, you know, this is where the actual, like, really interesting part comes in, the really interesting, creative, woke part of this movie comes in is when he finally puts his sunglasses on, and he sees, like, the real, the world for really what it is, and it's, like, black and white, and he looks at a, when he looks at a billboard for an advertisement, and he puts it on, and it says, like, obey, or it says, like, when he looks at money, it says, like, this is, this is your God, or... You know, it's like stay asleep, blah, blah, blah. It's like all this yeah. really woke shit. You know it's what like, I mean? it's like what the. It's like so on the nose, yeah, it's but just, it's like so cool still. Yeah, same but it, I think it's cool too because it's like all the different things that it says, you know, for like different products or different like mm -hmm. magazines or something like that. Like, you know, like. You're a slave, like yeah. basically type shit. Yeah. Right? What I think is so cool is that the set design and the editing, because when he puts the glasses on, it's like a newsstand but then like they have to replace like build basically build the miniatures or sets of like billboards where it says like obey this is your god blah 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 like that that's what's like the, the practicals where the john carpenter genius comes into play is that the the, the practicals of the set building and the miniatures and mm -hmm. the that's like what i, I really fuck with, with yeah with this movie is yeah that. Fuck, he's so smart. Yeah. You're just talking about Cronenberg and, like, John Carpenter, too. They're so innovative and, like, such clear visionaries, you know, with what they're able to pull off and how they're able to just, like, go into the minutia of making a film, you know, mm -hmm. so seamlessly. Like, it's like, okay, here's how we're going to do this, you know. And, like, I bet it's not that simple, but, like, they're able to get over that hurdle like no yeah. one else, you know. Yeah, yeah, it's a really interesting camp sci-fi movie i just think though like the message really like stuck with me as like a young man because you're just like whoa dude like question everything bro <laughs> like it's like such yeah. a wake, yeah but you're wake not up like world. dude i wake met up world, yeah you know but i've met people that are way worse than you like what like going into conspiracy shit like oh about, yeah like yeah. politics or whatever like that shit, like, you never get into that, which I really, you're more about, like, yeah, like, this is how, like, systematically people are controlled, you know? Like, I think that, like, I love that aspect of it. Like, regardless of politics, it is, like, very true where it's, like, we have things as a society that we give up to society so they can control us, you know? Yeah. And, like, I think that is, um... Yeah, society tricks you into what is happiness type shit. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Like, I'm, I think I'm more into the fact that the things that the way that things are doesn't have to be that way. Mm -hmm. And you can find other avenues to, to life that can like bring you like 
I guess, happiness or whatever. This is a very consumerist Ronald Reagan era mm -hmm. like type shit. Like this is like very, very like Reagan era consumerist, all time high consumer. Like this is what John Carpenter was trying to say. He was like, oh yeah, I was like thinking about how like much like consumerism was going. Consumer was like an all time high in like mm -hmm. the, the late eighties with like Reaganomics and shit, which is yeah. which definitely makes a lot of a lot of sense and like it kind of feeds into a lot of stuff that goes on today, yeah, like conspiracy shit, mm -hmm. you know? But I'm not, like, trying to be, like, tapped in, like, oh, like, you know, the banks are controlling us, blah, 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 like, oh, whatever all that shit is, dude. Like, it's just more about, like, you know, questioning things for what they are and deconstructing the world and then finding your own path. And I just think it's a cool concept. I just think it's a really, really cool concept, the, the, yeah. the movie. and yeah. yeah, it's cheesy and camp, but it's, like, supposed to be that way in a way. Yeah. You yeah. know? You want to talk about the fight scene? That you yeah, I do. Like? Yeah. So first of all, you got young Keith David in this. Oh yeah, yeah. He's fucking great. Oh yeah. my god, he's great in the thing. He's great in this. Just like randomly in the middle of it, you know, they're talking about how big wrestling is in the eighties. There's a twenty minute wrestling scene. It really, really bugged me until you kind of broke down that like meaning behind it, which yeah. I really like, but. Yeah, at first I was like, this is so fucking cheesy. Like, yeah, yeah. Like doing yeah. all these wrestling moves. And it's like, it's totally like, you know, you have like this, probably the most famous wrestler in the world at the time in your movie. Like, there's got to be some wrestling scene or something like that. So I can see why it's in there. But I, I, when I was watching, I was like, this is so fucking lame, whatever. But it's on purpose, though. Mm -hmm. like, it's on purpose. It's supposed to be kind of like, elongated goofy not like super realistic you know because like john carpenter does for his time super like kind of realistic violence like if you watch like the thing or like the halloween it's like way more like it's like the physics are there you know what i mean like it's not like yeah like... this is just like a point point to make the struggle of trying to get someone to see the world in a different way yeah that's what he's that's what it's trying to do it's not like obviously the fight is like ridiculously long mm-hmm but it's it's like very on purpose. It's supposed to be there. Yeah. Type type shit. Yeah, I like that. Like it's very long because it's like you said, like it's like trying to get someone to see the world a different way is so hard. You're never gonna be able to like yeah. easily guide them there. Like you kinda have to like force them there in a way. And mm -hmm. that's what he does, like like man to man with Keith David. He's like, I'm gonna fucking get you to put on these glasses, you know, like Yeah, like it's it's I think if you just go into this movie and you don't know what the fuck it's supposed to be, like, it's easy to say, oh, it's, like, fucking stupid and cheesy and trash, right? But, like, if you go into it, you know, you have to kind of know what you're getting yourself into. Like, I don't... It's the thing about, like, John Carpenter's movies. They're kind of, like, white trashy. Yeah. I think that The Thing is the greatest movie ever made for, like, white trash people. <laughs> you know? Like, my friend Connor... Yeah. Connor was telling me one time how he was watching The Thing with his friend. His friend's, like, dad, like walked in and you know my friend's redneck dad walked in and we were watching the thing and he was like dude isn't this the greatest movie ever made <laughs> which makes sense because i feel like john carpenter makes kind of like americana he does not he does. like kind of like less classy yeah. horror films like kind of b to like a movies but you know that's but like would you say it's like classier horror films then? like dude like any of the italian guys <laughs> you know that's just my that's just my opinion yeah I no the, do any of the italian guys make really classy horror movies like yeah. i can't say anyone from the american era makes good it's just americana it's just like very americana it's not you know it's more like function over design you know what i mean yeah. whereas like the european horror directors are like you know the design does serve the function but it is more design aesthetic over like the function of alley where it's like halloween is like stripped down get to the core of like the suspense and the drama and like the violence like it's very much everything that's in the movie is about what is going on and like in the in the story it's not like a super overly stylized type shit and the characters are like people living in the suburbs or regular like working class guys yeah. like it's kind of like spielberg-esque in that sense yeah yeah like, it's like it's always like middle class working dudes like mm -hmm. kurt russell and these guys and like antarctica like salt of the earth guys yeah. when you watch like an italian horror movie it's always like upper class yeah. people you know what i mean like living yeah. in a nice house or like these like ballerinas or something yeah like yeah and that's like a different type like yeah. this is this is like american and that's what i have to say this they live is very much american like mm -hmm. you know 
And I think it kind of taps into the hearts of the American like working man about, you know, this commentary about like kind of wages and you know, mm-hmm. being control. There's a lot of ways you can look at this picture. Yeah. I like that. What do you think about what do you think about the scene where she throws him off his off her house, dude? That one girl that he like kidnaps, you know, and he's like Put on these glasses. I want to show you the real world and stuff. Like when he's like has to get out because he starts going on this killing spree of all these aliens, you know? Yeah, yeah. And then he like kidnaps her. And she oh, she's actually him. a good guy, right? She's actually a good guy. Yeah, she's actually a good guy eventually. But like when he's like put on these glasses. Oh yeah, he throws her off her house or something. Yeah, like that. He, yeah, he, yeah, like yeah. she smashes him and throws him out of her house. Yeah, like yeah. it's fucking. It's goofy, dude. It's high up, dude. It's crazy. Yeah, you have to. You have to meet this movie halfway in a sense of like that type of shit, but yeah. I guess it's, it's supposed to be fun on purpose. Yeah, it is. It is fun though. It is fun. It's good. I think John Carpenter is like the opposite of like pretentious. Yeah. Because there's like interviews of him. You should look him up because he's like really like he's like nah like fucking Robert Altman is like pretentious. Like it's not like the cave Mrs. Miller. Like it's masturbatory. Like nah. Like he, he's like talks shit about a lot of like really contemporary like films of that time yeah because he's he's like a yeah because he's like a he's like a showman you know he's like there to entertain yeah yeah he's a we saw him at at a diner yeah we saw him at denny's but he's like a guy who was a craftsman that became an artist later on yeah but the thing about carpenter that bothers me is that he's credited for a lot of things that i think people were doing before him like with the slasher genres and stuff you know Maybe he popularized it in the mainstream of America, but there are other movies, not only in, like, America, but also, like, the Italian horror slashers were doing, like, that. Yeah. they were already doing that with the like genres. Like, yeah, 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 they were already doing that. Yeah. But, whatever, dude, like, people love John Carpenter. Well, I mean, like, fucking Jalo itself is, like, imitating, like, Hitchcock, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So, it's like, it, it's like, it all goes back to Hitchcock in a way. But yeah, yeah, it goes I, back to Hitchcock, and it goes back to, like, Peeping Tom, and then uh, Herschel Gordon-Lewis, bro. Herschel Gordon-Lewis, yeah. Herschel Gordon-Lewis is, like, one of the most influential horror directors of all time. It's crazy. Yeah. Like I said, this is probably my favorite one. People really love him. Like, people think he's the greatest. I, I wouldn't say he's up there with, like, my favorite American, like, horror directors or genre directors. But, you know, I respect it. And, uh, yeah, should we watch more John Carpenter? I don't really want to, but... Yeah, we will. We will. After all, after that whole spiel. Yeah, we're gonna... Who are your favorite uh, American horror directors? American horror directors? Uh, like, right now? No, I'm asking them. Oh. Leave a comment below. I, I like George Romero and Wes Craven more, but that's just my opinion. Also, Frank Hennenlauter I fuck with a lot. Yeah. 